everyone! So today we're looking at 2.6 Malthusian Theory. Our tidbit of the day is that the moon actually has moonquakes. Our learning objective for today is 2.6, explain theories of population growth and decline. We're particularly looking at Malthusian theory, Neo-Malthusian theory, and their critiques. So Thomas Malthus was an 18th century economist from Britain and he did a few things. The first thing we're going to look at is overpopulation. So he coined the term overpopulation, which is when a population exceeds its sustainable size, or in other words, there are more people than the environment can support through food, water, and other resources. We tend to overuse this term. The world has not yet become overpopulated. We can still support easily, or fairly easily, the amount of people that we have but some regions are more overpopulated than others. It's largely about how we allocate our resources. So when we look at Malthus, he has a particular theory of population growth. So he believes or believed that population would grow exponentially. It would keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, continual and ever increasing, while food sources would grow arithmetically at a constant rate. He lived during the 18th century and very few countries at that point in time were even in stage two development. So when we graph out what his theory looked like, we see food goes very steadily, uh, grows very steadily. It's a constant rate. This is our arithmetic growth. And then population kind of stays along the same for a while. And then all of a sudden it begins to spike and then just keeps growing and growing and growing. And this is what Malthus believed and was concerned with. So if you look at this point, you can see that the population is going to drastically outpace food sources, according to Malthus. Looking at it in another way, so in a chart, essentially what we would see is that at year zero, so today, you have one person, you have one unit of food. Remember, our food is growing at an arithmetic rate, our population is growing at an exponential rate. So food will grow by one every 25 years for our purposes and population will double every 25 years. So it's good for the first two. Year zero, one person, one unit of food. Year 25, two people, two units of food. Year 50, four people, three units of food. And now you see the problem. 75 years, eight persons, four units of food. Year 100, 16 persons, five units of food. So we would drastically outpace our food production according to Malthus. He did believe things like natural disasters, disease, and war would naturally check the population, um, meaning that they would kill a whole bunch of people. That was essentially his hope, so that the population would remain under control. His other thought was that he felt that it was necessary to practice moral restraint to limit the number of babies being born, which means that people are not going out and making babies. That's the moral restraint part. You hold back from the things that you want to do that aren't necessarily considered moral for the time period. But then we get a new and improved, I guess, a different group uh, called the Neo-Malthusians. So they're like Malthus, but they're newer and they are going to make a slightly different argument. This is a contemporary school of thought, meaning that this is a modern one. This began in the 20th century, and basically they have the same general ideas as Malthus. They said that there are too many people for the resources available. They believe that while there are declining population trends in fertility and CBR, these will ultimately reverse in some countries and result in massive growth. They think that growing populations, so our developing countries in particular, may bring in increasingly unsustainable development. Essentially, we're going to have too much strain on resources as these new places develop. They believe that future scarcity will lead to war and famine, and they advocate for population control. The big thing that's kind of setting them apart from Malthus is they're not really focused on food. They're more focused on other resources like fuel and various types of energy sources. But... Malthus and the Neo-Malthusian have some criticisms. They have some critics against their beliefs. So Malthus's theory of exponential population is kind of true, but realistically NIR has been decreasing in recent years. Malthus did not anticipate the use of contraceptives or that they would really exist 
or any other population growth factors. Uh, he also could not anticipate the technological advances that we would have that would make farming much more efficient, that would make our food production much higher. We have another guy by the name of Bozerup, and he countered Malthus very close to the same time period. Basically, Bozerup said that food productivity was directly related to human population. So the more humans there are, the more food they will produce. Because now you have more of them, you have more hands, you have more minds, and they will do it more and better. Some geographers think that Malthus's model doesn't really apply on the broader scale. So it might fit on the small scale, looking at one little area, but if we apply it to the whole globe, it doesn't really fit. And finally, Malthus did not really account for the ladies. So he did not account for women in any workforce, particularly in agriculture. And for many cultures and societies, they are absolutely essential. However, Malthus did have some valid points. So in Africa, we do see that the carrying capacity may be exceeded in upcoming years as the population continues to grow at the very rapid rate is it's growing currently. So if it stays on that trend, um, they may become overpopulated as a continent. In India, rice grew as Malthus predicted. So it was basically right on target with what he said. However, Despite that they have this huge population, it actually didn't grow as quickly as Malthus's model predicted. And the food supply has grown much more quickly even than the population. So they have been fairly well supplied overall. Again, there are cases of poverty. There are certainly cases of malnutrition and food scarcity, but that tends to be more of a poor allocation of sources rather than a lack of sources. Okay, that's it. So we explain theories of population growth and decline. In this case, Malthus, Neo-Malthusians, criticisms. And what I want you to do in your notebooks is take a couple of minutes to explain how Malthus's theory was affected by the time and place in which he lived. So again, he was an 18th century British economist and describe one valid point of Neo-Malthusian theory. And that's it for today. Make sure you go back, rewatch anything that you missed, um, read in your books, and let me know if you have any questions. Bye.